Hey folks, Quilly Team here and welcome to another episode of our Let's Play of RimWorld with no mods and no expansions and a little bit of a more tutorial kind of vibe to it. We got two problems going on right now. First of all, we got a psychic ship that just landed here and that's going to be a whole thing to deal with with some mechs and things. But perhaps more terrifying, we do have one man hunting squirrel roaming around on the outside. Oh, so terrifying. Oh, oh I thought they were going to come around to the front door. Not yet. Well, they might come after Berg. At some point, that, that squirrel will fall asleep. Oh, I missed it. I should have responded a little sooner to Berg. Sorry, Berg. Let's get some help. Whoever gets here first to help Berg, please. I mean, if you don't fight back, you can die to the squirrel pretty easily. I mean, in real life, it's true. I mean, if there's a squirrel that's gone crazy because they're rabbit or something, and you literally don't do anything about it, and it just keeps chewing at you, it can kill you. All right, yeah, we got cover coming through. Now, in RimWorld, the biggest threat from the squirrel is probably... Oh, does Labrie have not, not have a weapon yet? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Um, let's equip the good recurve bow for now until we get you a chain shotgun. Okay, I think Berg just defeated the squirrel in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I mean, it's not like they're that tough, and I could have reacted right away there. But I'm worried, because sometimes you sit there punching it, and it just doesn't work out. I guess I could have double-checked Berg's um, melee. Yeah, no, they have crap melee skill. Oh, no! A social fight? What happened? Paolo insulted Fob's nose. This drove Fob into a rage, and she began to fight. Darn it. Well, that's annoying. Let me unrecruit uh, LeBray here, but then tell you to go and equip that bow again. Molotovs and grenades are actually pretty good weapons early on. Um because you don't really have to aim for them. Just fling them in the appropriate direction. Now, Paolo and Fob got in this fight. Hopefully, there's no proper injuries. Okay, no, just a bunch of bruises. It's going to have to be okay. It does remind me again that it would be nice to get a proper hospital set up. Just so that we have a guaranteed place for them to go and lie down. A place with, with a good amount of cleanliness that's got access to the, uh, the basics. How's this place? Dining room is now decent. Oh, because it's dirty. It actually went down, but that's because there's a bunch of blood everywhere. But Darcy's on cleaning. It'd be nice if she cleaned... She? He? She. Cleaned the uh, the dining room first. Here, let me just go and force you to clean this area here. There we go. Now what's this looking? Slightly impressive. Okay. I mean, the urns aren't, like, the most beautiful thing in the universe. Beauty of five. But it's not bad. Now, what I could also do is I could leave these deconstructed and sell them. Maybe the next time a trader comes through, we can just do that. Oh, there's a chain shotgun ready to go. Um, you know what? Come over here and equip that. There's still someone with the uh, the uh, bolt action rifle. I actually wonder if the recurve bow might be a better option. Yeah, that's a vort over here. Let's see. Range 26, 14 damage. Oh, 18 damage. No, okay. Nope, bolt action rifle is better. Longer range, better damage. Unless I misread the numbers, which is entirely possible. Okay. All right, we're back up to around 1,000 steel, so I'm, I'm going to try to avoid mining too much right now. We have some components as well. Well, the part of me wants to just mine out these components. You know what? I'm going to do that. And then I think what I'm going to do is try to fill this up. Because I think the reason I didn't mine it earlier is because there was overhead mountain there. And there'd be some bugs. So yeah, we'll just try to crack this open. Oh, that's granite chunk out of here. It's a little bit awkward. Okay. So, the squirrel is done. There we had the social fight. We have to deal with this. First of all, we might want to wait until the fire runs out. Um, if there isn't a fire burning all over your map, then um, the game will generate rain for you. So out of control wildfires will actually summon rain. Uh, so, that's, and, I mean, we might just hit rain as regular weather as well. This psychic ship is generating psychic drone, which is going to get worse over time. Right now it's only low, so all males, luckily it's males because we have mostly females in our base. Um, currently have a mood debuff, which is only going to get worse with time. So, low psychic drone, minus 12. I mean, that's bad enough as is. And yeah, it's going to get worse over time. So, we definitely need to deal with this before it gets too bad. The problem is, as soon as we shoot this, these mechs are going to start waking up. 
um, and then we're gonna have to fight them. And mechs can be pretty dangerous. The pikemen here, uh, I don't know if we can get the stats on the needle gun. I mean, that's melee DPS. And we get a shooting accuracy, but I don't think we can get the damage on the needle gun. I don't know. And what do we have here? Lancers. Yeah, so these are all ranged dudes. Um, but yeah, they have fairly decent armor out of the box. But I think we're going to be okay. All right, this fire's not spreading this area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try... I think I can build near here without these things aggroing. Fingers crossed. We'll just build a little wooden barricade. Fairly close, because of course we are short range. We'll try to do this. It sucks that we have some injuries, but we don't have any other construction. So yeah, Berg's going to go and work on that immediately. And at some point, Fob's going to be up. I mean, we could turn off the bed rest here for Fob. Because... The bed rest will make these bruises heal faster, but it's not like they're actually a huge problem. Okay, that's done. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill this in with some uh, limestone. I'm going to do it this way. Uh, you can't build diagonally, I think, so I think I can do this. But yeah, we'll try to get that filled in. Luckily, it won't take long to build this because it's easy to haul a bunch of wood out here. Okay, and it did rain, so all that fire is gone, which is good. But yeah, we're going to have to deal with that. And I'm worried about some injuries. Mechs are serious business. But again, we have half-decent basic armor on everyone. We have half-decent weapons. We actually could consider Molotovs over here, but nah. Oh, are you fleeing? Yeah, but they're... Hmm. I'm going to set this to ignore. They're asleep. Let me reset you. The flee default's pretty good. Although sometimes the attack default's good. Ignore is rarely something you want to maintain. Okay, that's up. So before I forget, I'm going to put everyone on flee. Normally, if you see a bad person, just flee from them. Although we could turn on attack, except for Honey, who can't fight back. Okay, 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm just going to check people's needs real quick. Chemical, right. We'll get you some. Okay, no one's in a terribly bad mood shape. So I'm going to recruit everyone and get them over here. I'm going to turn off the fire at will so they don't start shooting early. Although I don't think they would with these asleep, although I'm a little concerned because they were doing the run. Okay. One thing is, if you get the psych... Well, okay, this is the way it used to work. It's been a while since I've tried to do this, so it may not work that way anymore. But certainly back in the day, if you got the psychic drone ship below 50%, then I believe the mechs would properly come and attack your base. Um, but otherwise, they linger around here. So one of the things you used to be able to kind of do, and I'm betting it's still a thing, is you could maybe, from range, shoot this a few times, try to, like from long range, bring it below 50% and then run back to your kill box. Here, though, there's not that many mechs, and our weapons are really short range, so we're just going to engage them directly. I'm going to turn on fire at will so that they act intelligently. I'm also going to tell them all, Start off, I mean, we got to do some damage to wake these up. We're going to see if we can just, like, burst down this pikeman really quickly. All right, it took some damage. Yeah, no missing body parts yet. And I'm really worried about the damage we're about to take. Okay, good. That's downed. Everyone should still be in range of a target here. Oh, Paolo, do you not have a target? You're just on watch. Yeah, shoot, that guy's too far away. Same thing for Lebray and Berg, actually. Well, if I just move you behind here, Berg. Yeah, Berg's going to be able to start shooting here. Okay, good. And then what I'm going to do is everyone except Vort, who definitely has range, I'm just going to get you to run up over here. And I'm going to move Vort to minimize the chance to shoot someone in the back of the head. Although being clumped up like this does increase the chance that a shot that misses its initial target from the Lancer will hit someone anyway. But there you go. Mass damage. Great. Let's blow up the psychic the drone ship as quickly as possible. Don't worry if it explodes in a radius. Do be careful if there's like a little flame effect that starts off here. You might have a few seconds to respond. Can't believe how many shots we're missing. It's very embarrassing. Okay, good. Unrecruit everyone and unforbid everything. So it is nice. We get component, advanced component, some plasteel. That actually went exceptionally well. We've got a couple of people who are injured, although I think that's just the bruises from before. Did no one actually get shot? 
I mean, we might have gotten hit, but it might have been soaked by our armor. That's brilliant and beautiful. Oh, so good. Now, the machining table. I'm going to make sure we have a bill over here. Shred mechanoids. Just like butchering, we're going to want a shred mechanoid job set on forever. Someone's going to come collect these mechanoids, rip them apart, and get some material out from the mechanoids. So yeah, mechanoid raids, I mean, do give you stuff, but they tend to be so dangerous. We were in a good position to handle them this time. But you have to take them mega seriously. Don't mess around with mechanoids. The ideal... Uh, oh, shoot. Plague. Labre and Berg just got the plague. This one we need panoxiclin for. I guess I could build... We could build our drug lab now. We don't have the ability to build, like, all the things with it. Yeah, I'll just build it there. And then we'll just get a dining chair since we're still a little short on material for comfy chairs. Um, I mean, we did unlock some recipes. I know we may not have the material for it, but let's get started. Let's prep the jobs for the research lab. And the multi-analyzer is nearly done, which is excellent. There you go. See, we're shredding the mechanoid there. Got some steel out of that. Lovely. I don't know if you always get steel, or it depends on what the mech is. I don't know if you get steel, plast steel, components. I'm, I'm not sure, actually, what you get out of shredding the mechanoids all the time. I'd probably look that up on the wiki. I don't think it explains it in the bill here. Yeah, salvage usable material. It might be somewhat random, but it is good. There's no reason not to shred the mechanoids. It takes two seconds to do. You don't want them to just rot out there. Okay, at least we're being tended for the plague stuff. But as a reminder, yeah, hospital stuff. All right, let's plan builder hospital. Well, okay, before I build the hospital, let me plan out a little bit of a layout for the hospital. I mean, probably we're going to have a wall here. The question is how tall do we want to make this? So with the hospital, we're ultimately going to want actual proper hospital beds. And hospital beds will be able to get, in the research here, a vitals monitor. Which, just like with the end table, if the hospital bed is touching the vitals monitor, it will give us a boost to various hospital-y things, which is quite good. So, with our plan for our beds, we don't actually have the ability to build actual hospital beds yet, but we kind of want a plan on a similar thing where we maybe have beds here with the little monitor in the middle. And in fact, we could even plan to do this, to have up to eight of these. We're not going to need that many hospital beds right now. We only have eight people. It's pretty unlikely that they all get injured, but we might want to plan for that kind of space. The other thing you're going to want in here is you're going to want your medicine close at hand. So you want to put a little storage spot or possibly a shelf. It doesn't really matter, but you want a little storage spot for the medicine. Um, shelves are kind of, they just look nice, but there's kind of no reason for not, me not to go with the stockpile zone. I'm going to put a single tile stockpile zone here and another one here. Make sure that they are separate. And I'm going to make one clear everything, search for medicine, one for regular medicine, and make it critical priority. I make another one, clear everything, for Glitter World Medicine, critical priority. So there's always gonna be one stack of regular medicine, one stack of Glitter World Medicine in our hospital. Um, ideally, I'd also like the herbal medicines to be nearby. They do have to be refrigerated. They have a pretty long shelf life. You can see here, 2.1 years. They have a pretty long shelf life. So what I'm, I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another stockpile zone in here. Clear all. Um, for herbal medicine. It's only going to be a single stack of, I think, 10, right? I think. I'll keep it in here. The rest do or should. I guess they're not. I need to make sure my fridge here is set to allow herbal medicine. Yeah, because it's currently not. So the herbals are rotting. Oh, 25 is the size of the stack. There we go. So this is the preferred one in the critical. So we'll keep one stack of herbals in here. The rest of them are going to be fridged. So that way, when someone does have a medical emergency, we can get it fixed up really fast. So this, oh. You know what? I'm going to do this. I know it. inter, uh, no, we can't have a wall there. Never mind. Hmm. Okay. Hang on. We're just going to move things up. Uh. Cancel these. Do this. And actually, what we can do is put the storages down there. That'll look kind of nice. And then rebuild the bed plan. Not to be confused with the bed plan pan, which is something else you put in hospitals. Well, you don't do that in Rim World. But, you know, I'm just trying to make a joke. Shut up. 
me get that down. Now, I don't know if there's an easy way to put three disconnected zones, because I, I can do this and this, and those are two zones, but if I click here, it'll just merge it to the one I'm currently building. So you sort of have to unselect everything and put that there. So yeah, annoyingly, I'm gonna have to do this again. Medicine, clear all, glitter world, critical, clear all, regular medicine, critical, clear all, herbal medicine, critical. There we are. And then all kind of like this. You can walk through beds, so we could do this. But, you know, let's leave a little bit of a gap. It'll look nicer, and technically our people will be able to walk around faster, which is going to be okay. Um, we'll put a door here. I think we'll probably want a couple of doors just for ease of access, especially if there's an injury. You might want the hospital, like, as close as possible to a kill box as well. I think right now it's going to be fine. I don't want to put one here. Do I want to put a door here as well? I don't want people walking through the hospital, though. I'll do this. Walking, if you've got a, a hurt body, walking to here and then in the hospital is not much further than walking through here. And we might put an extra little room of some kind in this area. Okay. Um, it, I could put a lamp down in the middle of this room for now. In fact, I might do that because it'll look kind of nice. We are going to want a vitals monitor in the middle, but right now it'll look kind of nice to have it in there. And, you know, aesthetics. Uh, I'm just going to pull a power cable around this way because we're going to want to thread more power in more places later. And obviously we're going to want a sterile floor in here. Just not sure. I guess the order doesn't really matter too much of the building. I don't need this many hospital beds, though. What I'm going to do is forbid. I'm just going to have three things flagged as hospital beds for now. So again, I want proper floors under the door so that we don't generate dirt. But I don't really want to use more sterile tile for that. So, you know what, let's just, let's just use some concrete. It's not pretty, but it's not going to matter over here. Let me just use that. In fact, I might concrete more things rather than use the marble flagstone. I, I'm not sure. But yeah, you won't really... You'll sort of see what's under the door. Damn it. All right, fine. Marble flagstone it is. Done and done. Okay. But yeah, we'll get a proper hospital. Because we'll just flag these as medical beds, and it will just, like, make sure that people are in... Um, if they get sick, they'll rest on those beds properly, and it's going to be really close to medicine, which is going to be extremely important for us. I think I'm going to turn off the bed rest for everyone right now, because they're not really that hurt. There you go. Also, I guess both of our constructors were the ones that were injured, weren't they? Which is kind of annoying. Okay, we'll do this. Yeah, we'll just seal this in completely, make sure no bugs can come and bug us over here. Go, hauling. Oh, yeah, the drug lab. Yep, 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 yep. The chairs. Berg needs treatment, which is happening. Right, because you got the plague. We're working on a fob. Oh, oh, components way over here. That's Why are you grabbing the components from here? It was so far away. Although I am happy that they're being hauled inside. This might be another case where I should turn on hauling um, to a high priority just to get those inside before they rot. kind of like that idea. Maybe not on the people who are constructors. Scott, yeah, we really don't... Let's put up your hauling to a two right now. You can haul before you mine right now. Maybe just reset you there, Sky. There we go. Thank you. Do that. Okay, I'm going to feel a lot better about this. Multi-analyzer research done. Um, I actually could research hospital beds to get ready for things, but let me get just the medic medicine production out of the way. But most importantly... We are going to build our multi-analyzer, which you can get from, I think, under miscellaneous. But it's actually quite convenient to do this. I forgot we have the comms console tech. We should really get that down. So a comms console somewhere. I want to block that door. You know what? Let's move you there. Berg? I don't know where you are, but could you just prioritize moving this for me? Hang on. Thank you. Okay. This will let us contact other factions. Um... But most importantly, will open us up to the ability to have trade ships in space visit us. So what we want to do now is actually we want to put a orbital trade beacon in here so that we can trade things that are in this stockpile with things from space. Um, and this is one of the reasons why you can store silver outdoors, but generally I spur, spur, store it in the main stockpile so that because you need your silver to be in range of one of these trade beacons to be able to trade, to, to use your silver to trade with space. So I do that. Um... 
sometimes it might be worth building a trade beacon in this room as well so we could sell our cooked meals in, to people in space or something like that which might not be a terrible idea to give us a few extra bucks on the other hand it's something else that costs us a component to make and needs maintenance from time to time for now i'll just put one in here in the stockpile the main stockpile that we're going to be buying and selling from oh berg mm. botching the uh sterile tiles annoying because we do use silver to make that but it's interesting they're not making the walls first. We do have limestone, right? Yeah, we do. I wonder why they're building the floors and the doors before the walls. Quite curious. Huh. Chop wood. Try to get honey to take care of that for us. Yeah, Berg needs the plague treatment. We have, what, two people on medical duties? Yeah, all right. And I'm thinking you're going to be okay. We'll take a look over here. So the disease has progressed to 51%, immunity to 77%. They can still die if they have other things going on because potentially their some of their traits could hit some sort of critical point where they might die. I think consciousness, well, actually, I don't know. Like, I know, like, breathing and blood filtration, I think, and blood pumping, I think those are ways they can die. They will certainly die if the plague hits 100% before they become immune. Well, because once they become immune, the plague starts to decrease instead of increase. So they won't hit 100%. So generally speaking, you just don't want it to hit 100, which happens with the immunity. All right, wall's going up here. And yeah, we'll have the sterile tiles. We want a clean area for healing because if someone comes in um, and they've got a wound and that wound gets treated, the cleanliness of the room impacts the success available. Now, even though it's maybe not the right material, I'm going to keep going with marble flagstone because at this point I've committed to it. I want to make sure there's a gap between dirt and this door over here so that um, we really minimize the chance of, in of pulling dirt into this room because it's the transition from a dirty tile to a another tile that moves dirt. So this gives us a buffer before it reaches into this room. We're getting floored up, which is good. Flag that for medical as well. Here we go. So we have three beds flagged to be medical things. Now, these are just normal beds, so they're not actually better. You can see infection chance multiplier from room. It actually just went down as we completed more of these tiles. And that'll keep being the case. It'll go down a little bit more as this final tile here gets done. Now, this is also going to change dramatically if there's any dirtiness. So, yeah, now we don't have dirtiness. We actually have positive, like, anti-dirtiness, sterility. And that's going to improve again in a sec as this floor tile, I guess it's, oh, botched. Come on, Berg. Bam. There we go. Another 1% lower chance of infection. And that'll get even better when we get actual hospital beds and the vitals monitor in place here. Very handy dandy. Um, one of the things the you do as well, if someone is recuperating, if they're hurt in here and they're having to recuperate, you will get the ability to build TVs or you might trade for a TV. Um, and that's, I find, really good for the hospital because the TV covers an area. You can lay out your beds in such a way that they're covered by the TV because people... People who are asleep don't need recreation, but there's some people might be stuck in bed for a long time to recuperate from the disease. And when they're awake, they're gonna get miserable because they're gonna be bored. So you can give them something to do while still being in bed. And that's not a terrible thing. So there's still some excess stuff there. We might want to get these guys some proper bedrooms, but you know, space is starting to get a little bit tight. So we'll do that. People with minor break risk, like Berg's not terribly happy. We could consider, yeah, you're sick. Yeah, dull barracks and serious pain. Yeah, it's mostly the illness. We could consider swapping. If someone has, like, generally good positive move buffs and are unlikely to get cranky, we can make them give up their um, their bedroom in exchange for someone else who really needs a bit more of a boost. But for now, we'll leave it be. I guess I will floor over here with some flagstone. And yeah, at some point, we'll decorate this room as well. There you go. Multi-analyzers in place here. So if we go and check our station, we have 120% research speed boost because of the multi-analyzer and the clean room. Really, really excellent. So we like the fast research. That's so gonna be great. Um, okay, we have the medicine production. I'm gonna go and stop the re medicine production and start on fabrication. Um, it is gonna keep our, our progress here so we don't lose what we've done. The reason I'm doing this is because we can't actually produce medicine until we get some neutromine and we don't have any yet. Unless I'm wrong, but I don't think I see any. I don't, I don't remember trading for any. We need neutromine to be able to make medicine. You get herbal meds plus neutromine equals actual real proper medicine. Um, 
So there's no reason for me to finish researching that right now because I can't use it. Whereas unlocking fabrication is going to be really nice because we'll be able to produce our own components. And you kind of this kind of tricky because your fabrication bench takes, I think, like eight components to build. So you need some components to be able to bootstrap your component industry. So I really feel like I want to make sure to get it done as quickly as possible. I hate that we've only got five. Can we see any components out there right now? Oh, there's a bunch sitting around over here. And they're decaying pretty quickly. Hang on. I'm going to put a big haul priority on everyone right now. Because we've clearly got some stuff lingering around outside that we'd like to take care of. Okay, that can also be mined for a bit more components. So we have enough components because they're sitting around on the map right now. We don't have them in storage currently, but we do have enough that we will be able to build a fabrication bench. But, you know, not if they deteriorate. Ooh, there we go. And yeah, that's one of the reasons. You always want to buy components when you get a chance. Some vendor offers components, buy them. Do whatever it takes. At least one forbidden squirrel over here. We could butcher. I mean, it's not going to give us much, but it's going to have to be okay. Still looking for someone with planting skill. Poor, uh, poor honey. Yeah, eight. It, I mean, she was seven last time we checked, but it gets harder and harder to level up, and I don't think, it, realistically, honey's never going to reach ten, uh, unless we get some brain implants, um, and to be able to make Devil Strand, which is too bad, because we really like Devil Strand, particularly Devil Strand Dusters. That's where, like, I think Devil Strand Dusters offer the best defense until you get, like, recon armor. They're really good. And they're also really good for temperature management. I like how they're just chilling by these tables. Now, this is outdoors, and they are being rained on, which isn't ideal. I mean, I could box it in, but I guess what I'll do is I'll just put a little roof over here. So when they're sitting here, at least they won't be rained on at that point. But, I mean, they're still going to get it from walking around outside. The well, Bray here doesn't have a duster. We did uh, get rid of a bunch of the leather, and we haven't done any hunting for a while. Um, we still have lots of meat. Well, actually, we don't have a lot of meat. We have a ton of meals. And actually, our freezer's basically full. So hunting... And we do process the cows. Yeah, we got an extra bull coming in. So, yeah, hunting wouldn't be the right thing to do. At least we are going to get some cotton sometime, hopefully, not too far away. Yeah, it's getting there. And cotton industry is going to start. That's going to make a big difference for us. Okay. Cow one given birth. Oh, we do have some cloth already. Yeah, okay, there we go. We just make comfy chairs, but I do want to make sure the clothing industry is still going okay. Um, You know what? Sorry, let me cancel the parka job. I'm not going to do parkas. I think we're okay without them. Hopefully. We did get a little bit of a borderline not okay, but it hasn't been so cold that I really feel the need to get parkas. I think we're going to do fine without them. We could make the hospital prettier. It's decent. I mean, I can put some urns in there. But I think I'll just, uh, you know what? I'll put it in here just to improve the rec room a bit. I mean, it's already slightly impressive. I mean, as long as it's clean, it's got a floor down, it's not going to be too shabby. I guess, you know what I should do? I should turn off this as a gathering spot. There we go. Now they won't come here to just hang out. They will use it as a meal. And I mean, Berg's going to do there because they've already done it. But now they'll gather. If they want to gather, they'll gather over here. Like, I think they could have thrown parties over here outside, which all would have been pretty silly. Um, if I do feel like our power is getting worse, I can still flick off this switch for the outside power. Now, that is not really going to be an option if I do decide to build our redundant power connection over here. And I think, honestly, well, I mean, I could if I built the switch somewhere else. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. I really want to make sure we don't have something stupid that happens that causes our power connection over there. So I could actually just, I'm going to dismantle this power switch. Hopefully we get the component back. You get back, I think by default, 75% of the material. I don't know if it rounds up or rounds down. We get some steel back. I don't know if we'll get the component back from this switch. So maybe it was never worth building it. On the other hand, it gave us the opportunity to talk about it. Bob, um, I'm going to get you to prioritize deconstructing this. And then let me recruit and unrecruit. Come over here a sec. There we go. I wanted, I wanted, I didn't know if it mattered, but I wanted him to drop the steel or her to drop the steel so that we use the, the steel for the construction here instead of going somewhere else. Maybe it would have been fine. 
There you go. So the power is still there. We're going to get the redundant power line as a backup, which is great. There's lots of things that could happen to zot out your power. So I often like to make sure I have multiple grids. Technically, there's two ways in here. It would probably feel better. Like if I did something like this, then I would feel a lot better about a redundancy of connections within our base as well. You know, I'm less concerned over here because it's not as mission critical. But, you know, losing power to our freezer for some reason would be very annoying. So I feel a lot better about that. All right, third of the way up the fabrication. Some components. Oh, yeah, and the advanced components are in here. Definitely didn't want those to rot either. So we still have hauling at a very high priority right now. Um, I'm, I'm going to bring it back down to like a three here, especially with the harvesting. I guess Honey was locked in on a harvesting job. I was thinking they'd harvest one plant, haul it, come back, harvest one plant, haul it, which would be pretty stupid. Okay, psychoid leaves. Let's look at our drug lab. So we're going to make some bills over here. First of all, we're going to need to make sure we've got panoxicline if we can do it. Now, we can't do it because we don't have neutromine. Um, but if we have neutromine, we want panoxicline. Panoxicline, your people can take it. Um, it lasts for five days. And if they are on panoxicline, they can't get the flu, the plague, malaria, and sleeping sickness. It doesn't say anything about the flu. I guess it doesn't block that. But these are pretty, these are pretty bad news. It would be great to have that. So what I kind of want to do is set a do until X. Um, where we're going to want to keep, you know, maybe a couple of doses of panoxicline around per person. So let's just set it to 20. I mean, really, because it lasts for five days. Like, it lasts a good long time. But Pino this is fine. Maybe 25 might be a stack. But if we're under 20, we'll make four. So I guess it'll, it'll keep us somewhere between 20 and 24 panoxicline. Not that we can do it because we don't have panox We don't have um, nitromine. Now, smoke leaf joints, we're going to set to do forever. If we have smoke leaf, turn the smoke leaf joints, our people might be able to enjoy it to get a mood boost, um, but also we can sell it. Um, and then if we have any um, any psychoid leaves, we'll turn those into a drug that we can sell. Um, I If I compare flake to yayo, so flake, it's six, well, this is four, but, you know, 16 versus 32. Yayo is much more potent. I believe it's not quite as cash efficient per unit, although it might be, it tends to be balanced like the labor time versus the material. Um, so most likely it works out about the same. I don't know if I want Yayo around because it's a more powerful drug. Uh, so there's always a chance of an overdose of 1%. Uh, addiction chance 1%. Compare with the flake. New addiction chance five percent. Is Yayo less addictive? Oh, Yayo is less addictive. So I might just make Yayo just because if our people take it, and we do have someone with chemical interest, so it's a little dangerous to have the Yayo around. But there's a reduced chance that they'll just become addicted immediately. Um, I can't remember who it is that's got the chemical fascination. Chemicals. Oh, Darcy. Darcy's taking some drugs, though. Oh, they're eating the ambrosia. Yeah. So it's dangerous because we can't really turn that off. But anyway, mostly we're doing this so we can make money. Hopefully, Darcy's going to be okay and not kill herself with drugs. That would be poor. Next thing we're going to do, when we do get the medicine research in here, we'll also put in a job to make medicine. And we're going to keep a good amount of it around, like maybe like 50 or 100 units of medicine. Like if we've got neutromine, we do want to make sure that it's made into medicine. Uh, you can stack up to 25, so, you know, we'll want multiple stacks of 25, I'd say. At least 50, I'd say, we keep around. But for now, I'm happy we keep working on fabrication. That's going to be fine. Now that we are producing drugs, we might want to consider looking at our drug policies here. So, there are a number of pre-made drug policies you can use. Social drugs is the default. You can also go with no drugs, unrestricted, and one drink per day. These are just pre-made policies made over here that we can tune. So, by default... If someone wants recreation, drug re recreation is one of the options. And the default social drugs allow them to drink beer or consume smoke leaf. You can become addicted to smoke leaf and to beer. It's a pretty low chance of that happening. So if someone wants recreation, they might go ahead and use beer and smoke leaf. Um, for addictions, this is if they are addicted. So normally a pawn won't consume these drugs, but the chemical fascination 
override some of these policies. Someone with chemical fascination is willing to do it. That's why Darcy, even though they're not technically allowed to use Ambrosia, will consume Ambrosia because we can't kind of stop Darcy from doing it. Um, but if any pawn gets addicted to these, they will consume these drugs whenever they go into withdrawal. So that might be reasonable. The other thing we can do is we can actually force people to take drugs regularly of various types. It can be a way to boost someone's mood. Hey, smoke a joint every day or something like that. But most importantly, really for us is gonna be panoxiclin. This is our antiviral drug that protects us from malaria and stuff. We're gonna to wanna to set a rule where all of our pawns take panoxiclin every five days, if we have any. We don't have any right now. You know, we might we might buy some, we might get some as a gift or a transfer pour drop. Eventually we'll start producing our own. And we really do want our pawns to take panoxiclin every five days, if, if possible, because that is how long it lasts. So we'll go ahead and set that rule up here. In fact, even the people with the sort of no drugs rule, I don't think this will violate it. So some people are um, teetotalers, they don't wanna take drugs, but I don't believe panoxiclin will count as that because it's under the medical category. So I don't believe it'll ever trigger a debuff from that. We'll find out. If they do, then maybe we'll change our mind, but we'll go ahead and set that. But yeah, we can we can mess with this a whole bunch if we want to. We could also encourage people to carry medicine with them, which might not be a bad idea, especially with our doctors, like Vort and Honey. You know, we can have everyone carry it, but Vort and Honey, let's have you always carry medicine around if possible. Because then you can treat people without having to go and grab things. Although theoretically, if you're treating people in the hospital, well, then there's going to be medicine right next door anyway. So it's hopefully not going to be a big deal. Okay, I did reset the work priorities for the hall. Indeed, I did. Everyone's nice and busy, which is nice. Again, I'm not going to do any hunting right now because our free is pretty full. There we go, playing some horseshoes. That's nice. Darcy probably just doing some cleaning. Bob. Oh, you are doing some more hauling here because there's no construction queued up. So that's good. And mostly really what, we're fe what I'm feeling like is Vort. Vort's research towards fabrication. That's going to be the next big jump for us. We'll keep an eye on some quests as well. And maybe some, you know, some neighboring things. If, you know, something pops up that we might decide to do. Yeah, Darcy's idle now. But again, as our base gets bigger, there's going to be more cleaning uh, uh, needed all the time. So Darcy's going to have something to do fairly regularly. We're gonna metal. We don't have a ton. We have a lot of gold. I maybe should consider trading some gold away. I, my thing is always like, I know that some construction needs gold. I think the multi-analyzer needed some. And so I'm always like, oh, I gotta keep some around. Quest, the robber lair. Okay, pirates are built nearby, raiding the caravan. Destroy the camps for pirates. Now pirates will be better armed than tribals. You got a few different rewards. Glitter world medicine is always nice. Animal pulsar is interesting because it can cancel manhunting. Having a bionic eye available is kind of handy. Hmm. Or we could do it for just goodwill. And of, co of course we always get the camp loot. I'm not feeling a huge need to go and do this. I feel we'd probably be okay. Although I'm a little bit more concerned just on the basis that um, you know, we have short range and these people will be better equipped than tribals. But it doesn't seem too bad. Oh, there's some smoke leaf joints over here. And Vort smoking some. And then going to work. Now, what I don't remember... Your high smoke leaf gives you mood boost, which is great. But the problem is, when you're stoned on smoke leaf, you do get a debuff to various things. I think... Okay, I think they use smoke leaf as a recreation during this period over here. Oh, which just makes me realize I can copy these as well. Um, and it's right before bed. So normally it's actually not too bad. That's one of the advantages doing the recreation period right before bed because they'll be stoned and they'll go to sleep. And by the time they wake up, most of the stoned on smoke leaf is gonna go away. Um, Vort hit maximum recreation. So even though this is a scheduled recreation period right now, Vort is satisfied enough the recreation to go to work. So it's not so bad, even though they're working stoned. Hey, we're getting a little bit of bonus work in here. But that's that's basically the situation. Mostly they'll get stoned and then they'll go to bed and they'll have a good night's sleep. And by the time they wake up, most of the stonage is gonna go away. They're not gonna do the drugs every day because you do get tired, right? Your recreation, you do get a debuff if you've done something recently. So right now, yeah, we're, we're gonna get 
25% less entertainment from taking drugs the next time. So next time Vort wants to satisfy recreation, they might go for cerebral play, i.e. play some chess instead. So they're not going to get stoned all the time, but we have to be a little bit worried about it. What's likely going to happen is I'm going to be pretty happy to just sell all the smoke leaf joints whenever a trade caravan comes by. All this yayo. I'm mostly worried about Darcy and the yayo. But hey, yayo's got some interesting buffs. Um, it increases your movement speed a lot. It makes you only feel half pain and only get tired one third the rate. Yayo makes you feel pretty good. Uh, until you get addicted, in which case bad things happen. Don't do drugs, kids. It's deceptive. Feels good when you take it, and then you feel it makes you feel miserable the rest of the time. But it is going to be really good for money. Do we want to be drug takers? No. Do we want to be drug dealers? Yes. In before this video gets demonetized. <laughs> Obviously talking about just RimWorld. <laughs> oh, oh, we got an extra gun. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Who does not have a chain shotgun? Is it just the bolt action then? Okay. Vort, although it is nice to get the range, but there you go. Everyone's got the bolt shotgun or the chain shotgun. No more job set up over here. We've got the flak vest sitting around, a spare flak helmet sitting around that feels really good. We do have the reinforced barrel. We should look at mortar tech because I don't think, yeah, we'll, we'll maybe research mortars after fabrication. Get one of those set up, hopefully before we get raided the first time. Erg, the middle of the day. Why are you reacting socially now? Your recreation is in good shape. This is weird. Do you not have a job to do? Because your recreation is really high. Speaking of high. Huh. I'm a little confused as to why Berg is doing drugs right now. Now you're wandering. Do you not? Oh, no, you're not actually idle. A lot of people are idle, though. Wow. I'm happy. Normally, I'm always like over scheduling people's work and that is not the case now it clearly i think we could probably mine a little bit just to keep some extra steel around what other busy work can i give these guys i mean i could have more than one person researching we do actually have the other research bench still there i mean technically paolo can do it although paolo's probably always going to be busy doing something else i should really deconstruct this extra research bench uh i'll just move this chair to there and then, yeah, we can put some construction in this area. I guess it's time to put in a cut. I don't want to because it's my last recording of the day. Devil's Strand bedroll. I wonder how much Devil's Strand I'd get if it deconstructed this. Devil's Strand is really useful. Although, we'd probably not get enough to actually craft anything. I'll keep it there. I don't know if the Devil's Strand bedroll is much better than a cloth bedroll or if it makes any difference whatsoever. I don't... I would never really make Devil's Strand bedrolls myself, but I guess we'll leave it there now. Someone's sleeping in their bedroll and they get shot at, then it's like a bulletproof bedroll. I guess that's fine. Yeah, there's no construction to do. I guess I can go and maybe construct these beds now. I mean, I'm adding wealth for something that doesn't really do anything for us right now, which is not really desirable. Is there anything else to construct that would be a win? I suppose I could be, like, I could double wall these things. Put a stone layer on the outside. Protect this from a little bit of fire. Make it a little harder for people to get through. I guess that would be acceptable-ish busy work. The other thing I can do is just put, a, like, a tier 4 craft on more people. That's actually not so bad. And you know what? I could even consider... I can build a second stone cutter's table. And the other thing I didn't realize is we have access to, um tool cabinets now. Tool cabinets give a boost to production of most of these little construction buildings. So if I build a, ca a cabinet over here, I think, is it 20%? 10%? Uh, I guess it doesn't say it here. Oh yeah, and one workbench can use two, so we actually want two of these per room. Oh, that's, yeah, wood cop cover a work spot. Let's do this. So everyone in here will work a little bit faster. We could put two in here, but the room's a little bit tight. I think I'll build a second stone cutters uh, thing so that more people who are otherwise idle. It's not going to work for Darcy. Psychic drone. It's not going to work for Dar Darcy, but otherwise, yeah, we can uh, maintain this. I'm going to put in a uh, granite blocks. Do until X. 
1,000. Because I know we've got some granite on the map. And it's a great building material. Very strong. Bob, can you build the uh, light first? I don't know if the light affects the quality of the build, but... Feels like you want light first before you do anything else. And what we're going to do... Actually... I'm going to turn off Berg's construction temporarily. Oh, i got to put a cut in here. Hang on. I'm going to turn Berg's construction off. Because I want FOB to build all these beds so that they're high as quality as possible. And I might manually deconstruct some crappy ones. Oh, normal. I mean, normal's not crappy, but it's only normal. Yeah, see, they're disturbing each other's sleep. Uh, I, you know what I can do? I'm going to make this bed into Labre's bed. So now they won't disturb each other's sleep. I suppose if I did this, hold on, and deconstructed that, this would count as Labre's personal bedroom instead of a dorm. All right, let's do that. I think I'm still going to want these in position for things, but for now, I can have them sleep in separate areas. Can I, like, forbid this bed so that Berg thinks they're sleeping in a personal bedroom instead? I don't know. Okay, and since I don't care about quality so much, let's turn Berg's construct back on. Although, still, I don't have that much to do. But yeah, if we can get the second stone cutter's table and just have people carving some stone a little faster, that'd be nice. I guess I'm going to take this um, block stockpile here and just expand it so that we're not using too much space in our stockpile for blocks. Not that our stockpile is anywhere near a fool. We're actually, I'm doing something I almost never do, which is manage my stockpile space pretty well. I don't suppose, like, what kind of phone calls could we make? I don't have any allies. Yeah, we'll leave it be. Because we can call in some trade caravans and things. We could make our own trade caravan as well. Not that we really have anything to sell, other than I suppose we could do a big drug sale. I mean, maybe. Ah, see that? We had a breakdown over there. So we're using up some components repairing things. The more electronic devices you get, the more that ends up happening. Oh yeah, get the tool cabinets open. Actually, come over here and deconstruct this. Just real quick so it stops counting as a uh, barracks. Thanks. <laughs> Good. Now, I think the bills... No. No, the bills copying. Yeah, I mean, it'll copy and paste, but it won't do everything. Need mods for the bulk stuff, but it still makes life a little simpler. Uh, copy this. Paste that. There we go. All right, so now we have two of these stone cutter stations. We don't have a second chair. I should probably build one. Dining chair. Again, we're a little low on cloth. We want a lot of it for tailoring, so we'll get that down there. But yeah, we might uh, we might just make blocks faster, and that's not a bad thing. It's quite toasty outside at 34. Our freezer's not holding at minus 9, especially with these doors opening and closing all the time. I think we're still okay. With a heat wave, we'll definitely need a third cooler. Not that this area is double-walled either. You know, that's not a bad thing for us to consider. Um... Now, I'm not going to double wall everything everywhere, but I will add a double wall there so we get a little bit less temperature leak. This is not the worst section for things to ooze through. I could add a little bit over there. I don't think I'm going to care that much about it. But I might double up my defensive walls in a few places. Ideally, I wouldn't want a, um, a wooden outer wall in places because that does um, that could burn. At least that'll keep our constructors a wee bit busy. Okay, I've gone way over for this video, so I'm going to put a cut in here. Folks, thanks a lot for watching. I think I'm going to record another one after this. I probably shouldn't, because I think my voice is going to get a little shot, but I'm just I'm having so much fun playing RimWorld. I hope you're having fun watching it, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.